Full time at the Emirates Stadium, Arsenal 2-1 winners against Nottingham Forest. Uh, thank goodness for that wonder goal from Bukayo Saka. It wasn't the cherry on the cake, it ultimately was necessary for Arsenal to win this game and take three valuable points. You know, at 2-0 I was thinking of calling this the perfect way to start the season. Not because it was the perfect performance, in fact precisely because it wasn't. It looked like Arsenal were going to coast to a pretty comfortable 2-0 win but with huge room for improvement in the performance. A lot for Mikel Arteta to talk to the players about, to work on on the training ground. As it turned out, <laughs> it was a bit nervier than that. Nottingham Forest goal made it a nervy finish and we felt every one of those eight minutes of added time. I'm delighted to say that the Emirates Stadium now at least have a, uh, a clock up so we can see where exactly the Emirates, uh, where exactly the stoppage time is. We've never had that before. I've had to start stopwatches on my phone and sort of nervously glance at it intermittently. Or sometimes, as you know, leave my seat and walk around the concourse just for my own sanity. Um, what to say about the performance? Well, I, look, Arsenal scored two brilliant goals today and we'll enjoy watching replays of those goals over the next week or so. I have to be honest to say, I don't think they created a great deal else. Now, nor did Nottingham Forest. I uh, can't remember Aaron Ramsdale making a save in the game of any particular note. Maybe one that was flagged offside. Arsenal scored two sensational goals and they had a few other efforts. Declan Rice denied from long range three times by Matt Turner uh, looking for that de uh, de home debut goal. But beyond that, I think creatively we, we struggled. Forest sat in very deep. And it looked like they had a game plan, and that game plan was to, in the second half, bring on some very physical, very direct players. The number nine in particular, uh, Iowini, I think is his name, was a real handful and changed the whole dynamic of the match. Let's go back to the start and speak about the starting 11. Gabriel uh, Magalhaes did not start. Arsenal uh, apparently saying tactical reasons. We shall see on that one. I mean, I can't think of a tactical reason why you would leave out a guy who started pretty much every game when he was available last season. Uh, maybe there's a fitness issue there that we don't yet know about. Maybe there's something else to it. One to keep an eye on. But it meant that White uh, slotted in alongside Saliba, who moved to left centre-back. We had Thomas Partey at right-back-ish. And uh, Timber at left-back. Thomas Partey really did not... Um, play right back in any conventional sense it's interesting he played right back didn't he at the city ground against Forest last season a game none of us remember particularly fondly here he really was doing that Zinchenko thing inverting and you know Zinchenko gave a great interview with Rio Ferdinand yesterday where he said the aim for him is to be in field drag the winger inside and leave Martinelli one-on-one -on -one. I think clearly this was our plan to replicate that on the right hand side to drift party in field have an extra man in that middle of the pitch but also create one-on-one -on -one opportunities for Saka on the right-hand side. Um, Arsenal looked very comfortable, I will say that, despite not uh, you know, having a flurry of chances. But it did take some brilliant individual skill to break the deadlock. First of all, Gabriel Martinelli, a wonderful kind of roulette spin, pass off the back of his heel into Eddie Nketiah. Eddie found the space, took the shot on. Listen, it took a nick on the way through, but if you're a striker, what you've got to do is get those shots off. And Eddie is very good at that in the box. Um, so he'll be delighted with that. And then, of course, a few minutes later, what a goal from Bukayo Saka. Unbelievable hit. I was right behind it. I was off celebrating as soon as he hit it. It was just sensational. And really, in line with the kind of strikes we were seeing from him on England duty at the end of last season, across the course of last season, we saw more and more power, more and more certainty in his finishing. And it looks like he's carrying that on into the new campaign, which is great news. 2-0 at half-time, looking very comfortable. Uh, then, of course, second half, things change a bit. Julian Timber picks up an injury uh, pretty early in the half. And I think that was disruptive for Arsenal. Tommy Asu was the guy who came on. Uh, and it's not that Tommy Asu did anything wrong. I just think Timber's aggression on the ball, off, off the ball rather, was missed. Um, you know, although Partey was playing at right back, he and Timber and Rice were kind of a midfield three at times, just helping us regain, regain, regain possession. You know, at half time, I noticed that we had actually committed more fouls than Forrest, despite having the vast majority of possession. And that was because every time they had an outlet, we were quick into the challenge. If it meant giving away a free kick, so be it. And we needed to do that better in the second half. I think when the big number nine was holding the ball up, Arsenal should have got into him quicker, made the foul, stopped the counter attack. We didn't do that successfully enough and lo and behold, uh, we paid for it. As I say, there were chances in that second half. Uh, Rice with a couple of long-range efforts. One brilliant save from Matt Turner uh, after a deflected effort from Rice. But I, I think 
and we saw some changes made Trossard came on uh, played his part um, as I say the loss of Timber I think was a blow but we did lose our way the game started to drift at around 60-65 minutes and I began to think look historically I've seen Arsenal last season at 2-0 up in this possession begin to drift begin to lose momentum begin to let the other team back into the game I really hope we weren't going to see that um, we did now obviously Forrest get their goal on the counter attack I need to see it again I think there was a bit of confusion about who exactly should be taking who man as we race back from the corner. When we were taking the corner, I did think we looked a bit over committed. Basically only Ben White back. Declan Rice made a 90 yard run back, but it wasn't necessarily to block any particular run. Um, so not great defending there. And Arsenal will be disappointed to have lost that clean sheet. We brought Gabrielle on to help shore things up. That obviously helped some of the familiarity that that brought. Um, and we saw it out. What I will say is, you know, Despite my concerns over the way Forrest came back into the game, I did think we saw out that final period quite well. There was some intelligent hold-up play from Kai Havertz, Trossard working hard on the flank, uh, taking our time with it at the back when we needed to, slowing the game down. Uh, they didn't really have another chance of note in the game. Thank goodness, because it would have been a travesty had we allowed them to nick something here. This was not a convincing win, and Arsenal, to me, you know, I, I spoke to you all after the Emirates Cup and said we look like a work in progress. I still think that's true. I think the omission of Gabriel today made that even more the case. Um, it's worth noting as well, we started this game without Gabriel Jesus and Zinchenko, who were such instrumental figures last season. You know, transformed the team, the culture of the club, the winning mentality. Didn't have either of those on the pitch today. And at half-time, you wouldn't necessarily have known it, which is a compliment to the depth of the squad. But I think those players are going to add something. And we might need Zinchenko if that timber injury is as bad as it looked from my seat. Um, Good day for Eddie, getting his goal. I thought Declan Rice, interestingly, played number six, but because of party tucking in field, a lot of his time was spent in that left eight role. The relationships on that side of the pitch are still developing between Havertz, Rice, Martinelli. Martinelli worked so hard in the first half, had real impact with a couple of great moments. Saka, great to see him off the mark. Uh, Odegaard, again, instrumental. I think at the back you could see there was a little bit of uh, novelty to the to the unit we put together. They've not played together a great deal, uh, and I, to be honest, I'm not sure we'll see this unit together a great deal. I think once Inchenko's back, hopefully once Gabriel's back, starting, uh, you know, we may revert to something a little bit more familiar. The important thing is to get the three points. It would have been a huge blow, especially seeing the way Man City came out of the blocks yesterday. Haaland scoring within about you know 180 seconds of the Premier League recommencing. Would have been a real blow to drop points today and fall behind. Um, important to get that first win. But like I say, a lot for us to work on. People here, pretty happy though, leaving the ground. They weren't too happy before when all the congestion was there. You couldn't actually get into the stadium. Uh, yeah, I think they would have been very unhappy leaving if it had been 2-2. We've got the win, we've got some stuff to work on, stuff to take back to the drawing board, to take back to London Colney over the next few days. Um, but points are precious and we have got those points. So, yeah, a lot to talk about. We'll be doing an Ask Cast Extra on Monday. I think it might be Monday afternoon. Um, but doubtless, uh, I'll speak to you all soon. I may even speak to you before then. I know I owe you uh, a QA. and a uh, and I've got some other good ideas for videos coming up. Please do like, subscribe. This is the first official competitive on the whistle of the season. Hope you all enjoyed it and I'll speak to you all soon. All right, take care guys. Bye-bye.